Hello everybody! Despite the abundance of literature on Pushkin, I would still like to talk about him, mostly focusing on Pushkin's role in Russian culture. Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin is a Russian national idol. In 1859, the Russian poet, literary and theatrical critic Apollon Alexandrovich Grigoryev wrote, Pushkin is our everything. One of the greatest 19th century authors of Russian novels, short stories and plays, Nikolai Vasilievich Gokul, who personally knew Pushkin, wrote, Pushkin is an extraordinary phenomenon and perhaps a unique manifestation of the Russian spirit. He represents a stage to which Russians will have developed in perhaps 200 years' time. No other poet or writer has attracted as much public attention to their work, personal life and character as Pushkin. No other writer as widely quoted as Pushkin. Here are a few facts from Pushkin's short life that every Russian knows. Pushkin's father, Sergei Lebovich, was an impoverished descendant of one of the oldest aristocratic families. His mother, Nadezhda Osipovna Ganibal, was a granddaughter of Abram Petrovich Ganibal. He was a Russian military engineer, general and nobleman of African origin. Kidnapped as a child, Ganibal was taken to Russia and presented as a gift to Peter the Great. He was freed, adopted and raised in the emperor's court household as his godson, when the patronymic Petrovich derived from Peter. Ganibal became a prominent member of the imperial court and his children became members of the Russian nobility. Pushkin's pride in his biographical ties with Peter the Great shows in his unfinished novel The Moors of Peter the Great. As a child, Alexander did not receive much attention from his parents. Instead, he was adored by his nanny Arina Rodionovna. She was a peasant woman, a serf. His affection to her reflected in many poems. She became a literary model and found a second life in his texts. For example, Tatiana Larina's nanny in Eugene Onegin, nanny Ksenia in Paris Godunov, and Arina Yegorovna in Dubrovsky. Arina Rodionovna told little Pushkin countless folk stories and fairy tales. A line from Pushkin's letter to his brother is cited in every textbook. What a delight these fairy tales are! Each is a poem. The value of Pushkin's fairy tales in verse Ruslan and Ludmila, the tale of the Tsar Zeltan, the tale of the fisherman and the golden fish, the tale of the golden cockerel, was established a hundred years after Pushkin's death, when the Soviet Union declared him as a national poet. Pushkin's fairy tales are an integral part of national culture. Parents read Pushkin's fairy tales to children, and in school children read and recite them at the literary reading lessons. These lessons provide spiritual and moral education and facilitate the acceptance of national values. Every Russian knows Pushkin's fairy tale Ruslan and Ludmila. Pushkin wrote it when he was only 18. It is a story of abduction of Ludmila, the daughter of Prince Vladimir of Kiev and Rus, by an evil wizard, and the attempt by the brave knight Ruslan to find and rescue her. The prologue of the poem features cameos by almost all of the heroes of Russian folklore. In this magic place, under that huge, old and beautiful oak, with the wise cat songs and tales, images from different fairy tales interweave. On the curved strand a green oak grows, on the green oak a golden chain, and on it round and round there goes the cat of knowledge, night and day, goes to the right and sings a ditty, goes to the left, begins a tale. Strange beings are there, there roams the lashing. A mermaid swings a fishy tail, there on the path untrod by humans are footprints of unheard of beasts. A house on chicken legs from Romans stands without windows, doors or gates, 
the hill and dale are full of visions. There's dawn comes, the waves are breaking upon an empty sandy shore, and thirty champions come striding out of the waters, noble, handsome, and after them the ocean's lord. The, the prince charming as he passes takes prisoner a fearsome czar. There in the clouds before the masses above the woods and seas to war a wizard leads a knight at arms. A queen there sorrows in her chamber, a grey wolf faithfully attends her. The Baba Yaga's fearful mortar comes rushing home with clash and clatter. The golden cachet meets his fate. All Rus magic lies in wait. There too was I. And sit the honey. The green oak by the strand I saw. Beneath its shade the cat of knowledge told me its tales. I can recall just one of them. And over tea I'll tell it to society. Russian poet Anna Akhmatova claimed Pushkin's verses gave children the Russian language in its most perfect magnificence, a language which they will never hear or speak again, but which will remain with them as an eternal treasure. In grade 7, at the age of 13, students analyze and recite Pushkin's rebellious poems. For example, they learn Pushkin's poem to Chadaev by heart. The sincerity of art of this poem can bring tears to the eyes of any Russian just to say the words, Dear friends, have faith. The wakeful skies presage a dawn of wonder. Russia shall from her age-old sleep arise, and despotism impatient crushing upon its ruins our names in size. In grade 8 students read The Captain's Daughter, and in grade 9 Boris Godunov, Little Tragedies, Eugene Onegin and Bronze Horseman. They also analyze Pushkin's love lyric. Pushkin's incomparable love poetry became so iconic that everyone can quote it by heart. For example, most of people can recite Pushkin's poem I love you. I loved you, and my love may still be there, Deep in my soul remains to stay a glow that should not cause you any more despair. I do not want to hurt you any more. I loved you unrequited in still wonder through boats of jealousy and diffidence. I loved you so sincerely and tender. God bless you with such love of someone else. There are some facts of Pushkin's biography that are part of every Russian person's knowledge. Every Russian knows that Pushkin's liberalism, independence and his scandalous duels infuriated Tsar Alexander I, who sent the poet into exile twice. First to the south of Russia, the Caucasus, and the second time to the poet's own village, Mikhailovskaya. Even more well-known facts are Pushkin's marriage to one of the most beautiful women of his time, Natalia Nikolaevna Goncharova, and Pushkin's death from the wound he received in a duel with Dante, a Frenchman who widely advertised his passion for Pushkin's wife. Pushkin saw no other option than to challenge Dante to a duel. Lydia Yakovlevna Gisburg, a major Soviet literary critic and historian, wrote, the love for Pushkin, which is incomprehensible to foreigners, is the true sign of a person born of Russian culture. Indeed, for Russians, Pushkin is a symbol of integrity, creativity and spiritual values. However, in post-Soviet Russia, other perspectives on Pushkin's place in the culture appeared. For example, a Russian poet Yelena Andreevna Schwartz considers Pushkin to be a mythological figure. According to Schwartz, when poets die, they become myths. The greater the poet, the more inescapable the myth. Pushkin was human, and some biographical facts published in post-Soviet Russia shake his sacred status of a godlike figure. For example, in some works Pushkin is described as an impulsive man who fought numerous duels. Or another fact. Every Russian knows that Pushkin's nanny, Arina Rodionovna, 
was a serf who belonged to his family. When Pushkin was sent into exile, she shared his fate and traveled with him. Pushkin dedicated a number of poems to her. However, a less known fact is that neither Irina Rodionovna nor her four children got freedom, and Pushkin's nanny stayed a serf for the rest of her life. These facts seldom appeared in literature and almost never are mentioned in the textbooks. In these works, authors question Pushkin as a person and not as a poet. However, both Russian and foreign scholars agree on the remarkable role that Pushkin plays in Russian culture. For example, Professor of Slavic Languages and Literatures at Harvard University, Dr. Stephanie Sandler, claims that Pushkin's writings and quickly emergent legends about his life enabled others to write, paint, sculpt, film and dramatize ideas that had great powers of national definition. His individual specific traits have assumed larger than life significance but he is also the symbol of the poet. He stands in the minds of Russians for all that poetry is meant to be. More than 200 years after his birth, Pushkin stands as towering emblem of Russian culture. His life and work is perceived as giving meaning to the nation's identity. And that brings us to the end of the lecture. See you next time.